I'm Sally Pointer. I'm in medieval costume today because this month I'm working and living at the amazing Middle Alder Centre in Denmark. I'm here with some archaeology undergraduates who are learning about life in the Middle Ages and we're doing a lot of public engagement and learning lots of new craft skills. The last few days I've been working on a new fishing net and we thought this might be a good idea to refresh some of the things that we looked at in my previous net making video. Nets of course are incredibly useful items and actually one of the very very few pieces of kit that you can make if you do reenactment that genuinely do work from prehistory right into the modern day. Making the net once you've got a bit started is quite straightforward. We've looked at that in a previous video but how do you start it from scratch if what you're after is a rectangular shape. It's actually not that hard to do and I'm going to set up a new bit from scratch and show you how it's done. So you're going to start by loading up your shuttle. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. This is a very straightforward wooden one and you're going to need a gauge stick. Your gauge stick will be half the size of the finished hole that you use. So different size gauge sticks, different size meshes in your net. And it does help to put things under tension. So I found a building with a convenient ring in the wall. I'm just going to tie the end off. From here on in, we're going to keep the focus quite close on my hands and hopefully with the whitewash in the background, you can see what's going on. So the first thing to do is just to make a little overhand knot that your gauge stick will fit into. Don't worry if it's an imperfect size because you can always ignore this later. The knot we're going to be using is the same sheet bend that we use in the rest of the knotting, but we're going to be leapfrogging down to make a series of links. So you take the gauge stick out of your hole, you put your thread over the gauge stick, you put your shuttle up through the loop that you've just made. Sometimes the first one does take a little bit of a wiggle, particularly if your shuttle is quite full, which mine is but that's okay, it will soon empty. You're gonna pull down until you get gauge. Now this is the important bit. If you can get your thumbnail right on the point there, it's not going to slip. You're gonna take your shuttle behind both legs of the loop that you're working into. That makes a loop. Drop the shuttle back down into it pull up gently and that knot should form exactly on the point there. Take the gauge stick out, flip it over, come down again. So thread goes over the gauge stick, you're going to go up into the hole that you've just made, pull up until you get gauge, get your thumb on that point, don't let go until you're ready. Through the loop, Ooh, don't worry if you drop it, just things up again. My shuttle is running away from me now. That's made a loop. Drop the shuttle through it. Pull up steadily. Now what's happened so far is we've made the first two loops. We're going to keep leapfrogging. So I'm going to do probably five or six of these on the video so you can see what's going on. Pull up to get gauge. Get your thumb on it. Shuttle through the hole back through the loop that you've just made, pull up, take the gauge stick out. And you can make this as long as you like. The loops that we're going to make will eventually turn out to be the first two rows of your net. So it always ends up looking longer than it will be in real life. Now get gauge, thumbnail on the top, Find both legs, pull up, I'll do two more and then we'll have a look and see how it looks stretched out. I'm very lucky to do that, I'm not actually balancing this on a tree trunk, I actually have roped somebody in to do the photography for me. Yay, we're going up in the world.
Okay, so we've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven knots so far. If we stretch these out, that's the two rows that will become the net. When you're ready to work on your net, the easiest thing is to put a string through the top here and then you can carry on working through the bottom. I'm just going to mock it up so you can see what's going on. Imagine that that's tied off to something. When you're ready to work your next row, shuttle and your thread comes over the gauge stick into the next hole that you want to work with. Get gauge. Sometimes the very first one you have to just wiggle a little bit to get it to cooperate. into the next available hole. From here on it, it's exactly the same as the netting technique that we looked at when we made a bag in the round. That's the one, if you haven't seen it, that's on my channel as making a net bag for a Roman legionary, because that was the group I was talking to mostly when I made that video. As I mentioned in the introduction though, nets are something that are absolutely universal. In time. There we are, there is our net building up. When you get to the end you can either work back in the other direction or what's often simpler, particularly when this is on a string, is just flip the whole thing over and you can work back in the direction you've just come from. So on the larger net you saw me making a minute ago, these are my setup rows. I've got one that goes down, one up, one down, one up, one down, one up. They're just threaded onto a string and you make it as long as you need it to. And then the bit that you're working on is all the way at the end. There's my thread that I'm currently netting with. And you just work your way along the net until it's time to flip it around. And you can build any size net that you like. Hopefully that makes sense. Netting is a brilliant project for doing in a living history context because it is so very, very portable. You can stop at a moment's notice and you can always use a net. That's it for now. I shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.